All right, hello everyone. This is Mr. Lang and I'm in my computer science and software engineering class and we've been working through learning a little bit how to navigate and work in what we call the command line interface. All right, so we, we've been working in the terminal and the shortcut key to get that terminal open is the control alt T on your on your keyboard. Well, you've got to be in your VM to do that control alt T and that will open up your terminal here. All right, and in this terminal uh, I'm going to go ahead and increase the size of my text a little bit so we can see it. I'm going to be working through some of the commands that we have learned uh, throughout this unit. And one of it is I need to see what is in my directory that I'm in. And I do that with a list. And the command for that is ls. And now that will show me my directories that I have. Uh, what directories are available to me and I want to go and see uh, maybe what is in one of these directories so I need to go ahead and change uh, into that directory and that's with a command CD a change directory and I'm gonna go into my documents and what's cool is I can start typing documents and then I can use the tab key on my keyboard to auto complete that and I can then go into my document directory I can also see the file path of this location by doing a print working directory with the command pwd short for print working directory and I can enter that and then I can see the full file path from my home my username B Lang that's me I'm the administrator to then my document separated by slashes I want to see what's in my document folder and I do an ls short for list and there is a document and I can tell that's a document because it's a different color than my directories. My directories are all blue. My documents are white. So there it is. And so there's a couple things I can do with that document. I can actually edit it right in my editor by, let me look at my notes real quick and make sure I'm using the correct one. I can use this nano feature. So let me show you this nano uh, space bar. And then I'm gonna start typing the name of the file with a tab key and I can open it up and see uh, what's in that file and I can actually edit it. So if I needed to add a new employee, I have to use my arrow keys to kind of move around it and not my actual mouse. Again, I'm not in a GUI, I'm not in a, a, a graphical user interface, I am in the terminal, so you have to use your arrow keys to go around and maybe my employee Shaquille O'Neal went from employee number six to employee number seven or something like that. And now I'm done with the document and I can do a control X and it says, hey, you modified this. Do you want to save those? Uh, and I can save that and it asks me for the file name and I can just hit my enter key. So now if I actually want to see what that dot, what's in that document, not in an actual to edit it, just to see what's in it, I can do a cat command, cat and then list. Oh, uh, if I can spell right, list, tab key to autocomplete. And I can see what is inside of that document. And there's Shaquille O'Neal. You can see that I've updated his number seven. Now, sometimes you're going to have a list of associates that's a mile long. And you just want to see maybe the first few things that are in the document. So you can use this uh, command called head and then type in the name of the document. And it just gives me the first 10 lines of that document. You can see it doesn't give me everything. But maybe I want to see what's at the bottom of the document. So I can do a tail and then start typing the document's name with a tab key. And I can see the last 10 lines of that. All right. Now, there's commands that I can do to rename the document, uh, to do all sorts of things. I'm not going to demonstrate all of those. I just want to kind of demonstrate a couple of those commands that I have. And now I'm going to go down to my user. So I'm going to clear this. And I've got a control L on my keyboard will get me out and clear that. Now, as you can see, I'm still in my documents directory. I want to get out of that directory so I can do a CD change directory and enter. And now I'm actually just in my username. And if I wanted to clear that control L and and that clears everything out and I'm back into this. So this is kind of cool. Uh, again, we're in our users. And so there's an ID command looking at my notes. And the ID will tell me details about the active user. Who's logged in right now? And that's me, B Lang. All right. And it gives me a little bit more information. I'm not sure what all these things uh, 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 stand for. If I got into Linux a little bit more, yes, I would want to start doing some research on that. But it gives me who is logged in. 
I can do this feature called last and I can say, okay, who was the last people logged in? And it gets a little bit longer here. And I can see that I've logged in here. Today's Thursday, September 22nd. I'm still logged in. But we actually created a, another user called Mr. Rocco, K. Rocco, a great student of mine. Uh, and so you can see when we logged in at K. Rocco. Uh, again, you can kind of see the, the, the logs of who logged in at what time. All right. It's called accounting. Uh, we can also do a who. This is a cool feature. A who just tells me very simply who's logged in and at what time. And again, I logged in this morning at 725. All right. We can also do a W, which will give me a little bit more information about that user that is logged in. All right. A little bit more information about it. Uh, and then, you know what? It's time for me to demonstrate how we can add a new user to our group. So I'm going to do a control L because I like things to look nice and clean when I do something new. And I want to add a new user. So I'm going to become a super user. And pseudo stands for super user do. And I'm going to look at my notes. And then my note says I need to do pseudo add user spacebar. And then the user's name. All right. Or the user's username all right it has to be all lowercase letters we tried to do it in some capital letters and and uh, linux yelled at us so one of my fantastic students mr harback said i could use him as an example and so i put in his username and then it's asking me for a password for my uh administration account so i'm going to put that in real quick you can't see it typing but it's going in there and so now it added the user and now it's asking what a password password for is for that you can't see me typing but i am typing i'm keeping my password pretty basic for this and now it's asking for his full name so i'm going to look at my notes here real quick and put in jacob harback again for his full name there and press my enter key and then it asked me a little bit about what room number that jacob may be in again if i was working for a company i would definitely want to put some of this information in what is jacob's work phone uh his home phone uh and any other and after i get done is this information correct yes it is i'll just put a y in there and say all right i also got a new uh employee that just started today so we need to add him as a user so I love to use my up arrow. It brings me back to the last uh, command that I put in. I'm going to get rid of J Harback, though, and put in a G Westra. All right, for our new student, Gabe. And it asks me for a password. Now, it didn't ask me for my administrative password. That's because I, uh, I have a five-minute buffer from the last time I put it in. So I got a little bit of time there. So I'm putting in Jacob's password really complex and now i'm actually going to be putting in his real name gabe westra thank you gabe for letting me use you as an example room number again you'd be wanting to put these in i'm just going to enter through it and that information is correct and now i want to see if those users were added to my system so i'm going to look at my notes real quick and go down and say okay list users all right and that is a feature called get int Spacebar group enter and I can look down here and yes, there's my two new users user 1005 and user 1006 So that's cool. All right, but you know what? Jacob is going to be a part of our development team and Gabe is going to be a part of our human resources team. So I need to make a couple teams. If you look in my uh, directory, I've created a marketing team. Mr. Rocco's in that. My research and development team, Mr. Sabag, is in that team. Those are those users we created a little bit ago. So let's go ahead and create a couple new groups. So I'm going to clear this just because I like a nice, clean uh, uh, terminal. Again, Control L on my keyboard to do that. And let me look at my notes because I need to add a new group. And there it is, sudo group add and then spacebar and then the group name and so i'm going to call this one my development team and i'm just going to use my underscore between uh words development team awesome and i'm also going to make another group so i'm just going to use my up arrow there and get rid of development team and type in human resources oh underscore I want to kind of keep my uh, system similar so I got those two you know what I want to see if 
those have been created. And that's through that command, Gentent group. I hit my enter key there. And I can see my new teams have been created. New teams have been created. But now I need to add those users to those groups. So I'm going to do a control L to get a nice clean thing here, clean uh, uh, terminal. And going back to my notes, there's my notes. I need to do a sudo for super user do user mod, user modification, spacebar, tack, lowercase a, capital G. And then I need the group name. And so I'm going to go ahead and put in my development team. And I don't think my tab key will work here. No, it will not. So I do need to type in development team. And you want to make sure that I'm spelling that according to what my actual development team's name is. So sometimes you want that Gent Int up so you can see, or Gent Int group up so you can see the actual name of that. Space bar, and now I'm going to add Mr. Harback. And that's just his username. So J Harback and enter. And let me see if that went into that group by doing a Gint Int group. And there's my development team. And Mr. Harbeck is now a member of my development team. And now I'm going to use my up arrow. And I am going to go ahead and get out of the development team and look at my notes. And this is what I was talking about just a second ago. Have this open so I can see how I spelled human resources. Because if you don't spell the group the right way as you created this right here it's gonna be like what are you talking about there's no group called human resource you need human resources so and then i'm gonna put in mr uh, g westra in there gabe westra again his username as my notes say and enter and it looks like they have been put into their groups but let me see with a gint int group and there it is i've got mr westra in my human resources team now i got mr harback in my development team these two are when I created those users. And the other day, we put in Mr. Sabeg into my R&D team and Mr. K. Rocco into the marketing team. And again, as I learn Linux more, I would want to put in uh, some security features to where Mr. Harbat can't go into the human resources team and get those documents and, and vice versa with Mr. Westra. But there we are. So those are just some of the tools that I have learned uh, in Linux to kind of demonstrate to you uh, and uh, looking forward to doing some research and, and maybe finding some more tools uh, that I can do inside of the Linux command line because there are so many more uh, to do. So thank you for uh, listening to my uh, vlog on my command line interface.